Does sharpening portrait images in Lightroom confuse you like it did me when I first started shooting? When you jump into Lightroom and you start trying to sharpen an image, do you just move the sliders back and forth until you get somewhere that looks kind of okay or looks like it should be sharp? If that sounds familiar, you're going to want to watch this video. When I first started learning photo editing, sharpening was the one thing that drove me nuts. It wasn't intuitive like exposure or color. It didn't really have to do with the artistic look of the image. It was very technical. I didn't know what the adjustments in Lightroom really did for sharpening. And most of the time, you couldn't even, it was so subtle, you couldn't even see what you were doing. So that, that really drove me nuts. And when you look online for advice on sharpening, most of it ends with, okay, and just adjust this until it looks good. But how do you know what looks good, what it's supposed to look like? So I spent some time learning what the sharpening adjustments in Lightroom do, what you really should be doing. And here's my three-step process that is going to make things really easy and really simple. Let's jump into Lightroom now. Okay, so we're, we're here in Lightroom and we've got a portrait image pretty classic fall portrait image and I'm going to show you the first thing you want to do is what's something called deconvolution sharpening. Yeah, that's a big word and I didn't know what it meant when I first learned it either and frankly you really don't have to know exactly what it means but here's the basics. Your camera sensor has what's called a either a Bayer filter or a different kind of filter. I know Fuji has the X-Trans filter, it's a little different. So a Bayer filter is the most popular one. That's what you're going to see in your Sony's and your Nikon's and your Canon's. So uh, a Bayer filter looks like this. And uh, we pulled this image right from uh, Wikipedia. Thanks, Wikipedia. And what you'll see is that not every sensor, every, not every part of the sensor records every color. There are green, red, and blue parts of the sensor, the camera processor figures out what's in between them and creates an image. Without getting too much into the details of that, the result is that your RAW file is going to have some lack of sharpness. And what you need to do, the, the correction to that is something called deconvolution sharpening. Even though it sounds complicated, the best part is it's really simple once you get into Lightroom. The first thing you need to do is adjust the radius here all the way down to 0 0.5 and then take the detail and move it all the way up. You've now done really everything that's important for deconvolution sharpening. Yeah, it, it really is that easy. The next thing you want to do is zoom into an important area of the image at 100% and adjust the amount until it looks good. Now what I like to do is kind of go too far and then back off a little bit. And what you want to do is look at the areas of the image that are important, that have detail that you want to sharpen and really pay attention to those because the next step we're going to get rid of the sharpening on the areas we don't want it like the skin here. You don't want sharpening on the skin uh, you do want it on the eyes. So the next thing you want to do is masking. We're going to hold the Alt button when we adjust masking and just like anything else in Photoshop or Lightroom white reveals and black conceals it and so we move the masking all the way up until we're only sharpening the actual detail parts of the image. So there you have it. Now it's hard to see on video because we've downs the video gets downsampled a little bit into HD, but that's where we started and that's where the sharpening. Give it a try yourself. You're not really going to see it that well on the video, but it's something you go through this process. It's really simple. It will make all your raw images better and this is the first step you need to do with any raw image. The next thing is optional. Actually, the next two steps are optional. You could stop here and have a perfectly sharp, well sharpened image. The next step is targeted sharpening. Now, this is what you're going to do based on what's actually in the image and what you want to focus on or what you want the viewer to focus on. So, in this image, what we would do is grab the adjustment brush 
and I like to, when I'm using the adjustment brush, I'll push the sharpening or sharpness all the way up. And then something like the eyes, we can get in there and adjust the eyes. And I think that's a little too much, so I'm going to bring that back down. And specifically with portrait images, you want to bring the viewer's attention to usually the face or if it's a larger image, the eyes. This, this particular image, it's more of a wide shot, so I'm not really that concerned with the eyes so much as just all this little this little detail up here, maybe in the in the hair. We can go up here and do that, and you'll see the sharpness actually adds a little contrast as well, and that's really what sharpness is, is just contrast. And maybe we can do some sharpening right here on this this scarf. But that's it. You don't want to go too much with this. This is going to be a subtle adjustment. You don't want to overdo it, just like anything in Lightroom. Now let's take a look at another image, and I'm going to show you one of my favorite subjects that I got an opportunity to shoot. Um, we have this nice foreground in the image, and we want to make sure that she's sharp and she stands out. So first thing we're going to do is what I said, the deconvolution sharpening. Let's zoom in. We'll go radius all the way down detail all the way up and let's bring that sharpening way up and then bring the masking let's hold down the all button bring the masking way up we don't want the sharpening on the skin but we do want it in the detail areas like the eyes and there you have it so in this image because we have a lot of area and then just just she's right there in the middle I'm gonna probably sharpen her entire face. We don't necessarily need to focus on the eyes because she's smaller in the image and I think that's way too much. Actually, we added some exposure too. It's way too much. Let's back it off a little bit. And again, this is something that's going to be very subtle, but sharpening things like the eyes or the face or details in a portrait will give you that extra pop and give you that, that extra attention to the areas of the image that you want the attention for. Let's go back to our original image and now we're going to talk about the last type of sharpening, the third step, which again is optional. You can just really do the first one and you'd probably be good with 99% of your images. The last one is export sharpening and export sharpening is something that I rarely do a lot of or rarely focus on um, Lightroom has some built-in export sharpening settings and you can sharpen the image based on the medium that you're going to use it in. In other words, if you're out, uh, outputting an image for a screen for a website, that's a different type of sharpening than if you're going to print a really large high gloss metal print or something like that. So you, you need to sharpen it differently. If you're getting into printing and, and high-end printing, you probably want to learn things in Photoshop. Photoshop does a much better job with output sharpening than Lightroom, but here are the basics. When you're going to, out, when you're going to export an image, click the export button, you'll have output sharpening as an option. Let's close everything else. And Lightroom is very limited in the options they give you. You can sharpen for screen, matte paper, or glossy paper, and you can do it low, standard, or high. I basically leave this on screen and low because I do a lot of outputting to uh, the Photography Goals website. That's probably the most common place I'll output an image. The last bit of advice I'll give you on output sharpening is leave it on low with Lightroom. If you're going to do something more high-end print, like I said, learn uh, there's some better uh, options in Photoshop, but as far as sharpening in Lightroom, leave it on low. I don't really think Lightroom does that great of a job with export sharpening. In fact, most of the time, I don't even bother with it. Now your three-step process probably just became a two-step process, and that second step's optional to begin with. So, I just saved you a ton of time with sharpening. You can sharpen your images very easily. You can sharpen your images across a whole bunch of images at once. You can sync the sharpening settings, the, the global sharpening settings. The last thing I want to talk about is dealing with noise in your image. If your image has a lot of noise, be very light with the sharpening. You don't want to go too aggressive with the sharpening because sharpening will just 
add more noise and then you'll try to remove the noise and you'll take away the sharpening. It's a tug of war between the two. So when you're dealing with an image that has some noise and you're trying to control that, you really got to go back and forth between the sharpening and the noise reduction and kind of work with them together and see where the image kind of hits it its sweet spot. There's really no hard and fast rule I can give you other than use the deconvolution sharpening and you probably and the masking and you won't have to worry about the noise because you can mask out the sharpening in the areas where you're going to see the most noise like large flat areas where there's not a lot of detail. When there's noise and detail you really don't see it that much so use the masking to take the sharpening away from those areas where you're going to you have a lot of noise and then use the noise reduction and you should have a nice balance between the two. And remember that sharpening does not fix an out of focus image. If your image is not in focus, any amount of sharpening you're going to do on the computer is not going to help. So make sure you get your images in focus. There you have it. There's the simple three step process, which really is like a one and a half step process if you really want to, want to think about it for sharpening your portrait images. Use this process and you're going to save a lot of time, you're going to save a lot of confusion, and you're going to get better looking images.